Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by a contribution from Sierra. And this is the Borderline Series Part 5. And this is actual usable audio from the car ride over from Part 4 from the transcript I read with uh, from Sierra. Hi, Ollie. Would this recording work for your channel? As far as sound quality, let me know. I'll send the contribution. Here's a link. Same narc, but she's ranting at me while driving, so there's significantly less background noise. Uh, it's 53 minutes long. Car ride ends at 26 minutes, mostly dead air after that. Just wanted to keep the recording just in case, but you should stop it at 26 minutes. The backstory is that she and my stepdad, Rick, broke up like a year ago. And she became friends with his new girlfriend's ex-husband, Richard. In a previous recording on the ride over, she had ranted for 18 minutes about being accused of stalking a two-year-old. Apparently, she thought because I'm her offspring, I am obligated to side with her, even though she stalked me in high school and early college as well. She also really abused me as a child, so I was pretty astonished she thought I'd agree she could never hurt a child. I also know my dad accused her of stalking him after he left her. We spent an hour at a relative's house without incident. Then she wanted to leave abruptly, which then, which when I was a kid generally meant she wanted to abuse me. She did not disappoint. This recording begins about when I closed the car door. After this, I rented a car for the rest of my vi visit, the purpose of which was never to see her, and bailed after I did what I had actually come to do the next morning. There was about 24 hours total. The conversation in my last letter happened right after I picked up the rental the next morning. By the way, this was two days after my birthday, the big 3-0, and she got me a pair of earrings that cost $4 at the Goodwill. Thanks, Sierra. Here we go. I know you would never do anything like that, Mom. Wouldn't that be, that would be the, you know, the vote of confidence I'd expect. Like, I, I don't care who said it, Mom. I know you'd never do anything like that. Um, do you actually think that I would ever be capable of doing anything to harm a child? Yes. I, I just or don't know what the situation is. The situation I told you. I mean, why wouldn't you take my word for it? We got invited to a birthday She's party. baiting you. She is baiting her here because she wants it. She wants the accusation so she can deny it and call you crazy. And then look for that victimization that she talked about at, at, that, at that restaurant in the, in the transcript. That she's digging for it. She's digging for it. This is like what my father would do. When my, you know when they're digging for the fight. And when a borderline digs for a fight, oh boy, oh boy, is she out for some supply. The other grandmother, the, the father of the child, that grandmother asked me to send her pictures because her camera didn't work. Or her phone didn't work. And when I sent her the pictures, that's when all hell broke loose. That's all that happened. Mm. And I got accused of stalking a child. Mm. I mean, come on. You know I would never do anything to harm a child. Oh, uh, you know. You know. They already tell you what your answer is. You know. No, I, I, mm -hmm, I don't. Because she knows you know she would harm a child. That's why she's telling you. She's telling you what your answer is because she knows what the truth is. She knows you know she would hurt a child and stalk a child. She knows it. I, I understand that you want to be neutral or you want to, you want to, uh, you know, everybody likes to be neutral, but I'm your mother. You're not allowed to be neutral. If she said anything like that about you, I would just say, no fucking way you would see her anything like that. Bullshit. I'm curious. Bullshit. I say the same thing about Brett, you know, about a lot of people I know. I'm Shana. Mm. Anybody, I would just go fuck that. You would take their side. Of course I would. I, I, or I would, you know, that would be my first reaction. Like, 
I know her like the back of my hand, and I know that she would never harm a child. And I would always go to bat for her. So that's kind of, you know, it kind of hurts my feelings when we say. Oh, fuck your feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings, bitch. The facts are, everybody knows you would stalk and hurt a child. And facts don't give a fuck about your feelings. I don't give a fuck what happened. Nothing happened. That's the whole point. Nothing happened. And you don't, you know, you have to trust that your mother would never hurt a child. You have to trust. Don't trust the facts. You just have to trust because she's your mother. That's borderline logic for you. Otherwise, I'm the victim. But she wants to be the victim anyway, clearly, from from the, the last uh, video you sent me. Or, God forbid, want to kidnap a child or stalk a child. I would never do that. I mean, what would be... I don't even know what my motive would be. Am I some kind of pervert? I don't really know what her motive would be, either. I, I try not to assume that I know not, what motives are. That's what her motive is, that she's still jealous. Even though she wants, says she wants Rick, but she's still jealous of her husband. I see. She's really ticked off that, that I beat her at her own game, I guess. Beat her at her own game. It's always, that's what I'm trying to tell you with these borderlines. And the, and the narcissist. It's always a game. And it's the mental game. It's that behind-the-scenes mental fucking chess that they like to play with people's lives. And then alter the reality right in front of you. She knows good and goddamn well what she did. She knows good and goddamn well you know that she knows that you know she's capable of doing all this. Yet she will sit there in the car and try to tell you otherwise. That's what's funny, because she kept going over to his house and screaming at him and asking him why, you know, what was wrong with him that he could be talking to me. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with him. He's a nice person. Nothing's wrong with Richard? Yeah, Richard's mm -hmm. a nice guy. He really is. He, you know, I have, I have talked to him almost every day for nine months. Mm -hmm. Extensively, and I visited him twice. I'm glad you've had that support. He's a sweetheart. I don't think he's going to be a partner or anything or long term, you know. Well, we'll always be friends, I think. But yeah, he's been really supportive to me, and I've been really supportive to him. Just on a day to day, you know, like talking things out, understanding. He's been a better therapist, honestly, than a lot of people. Anybody else could have been, because he knows what I'm going through. Do you feel like people who know what you're going through? Wait, how does it, first of all, how does he know what you're going through? I'm not clear on that. Because I got dumped and he got dumped. Uh, I see. Um, and we got lied to. And we got mm. played. And, um, you know, at a point when, when Rick was supposed to be really working with me to really make a new start and try and start again and try over and he, he actually wasn't doing that. Mm -hmm. He was sneaking around. You know. I, I don't know, when somebody says let's start over, I love you, you're my best friend, you, you know me better than anybody, I trust you. We've been together all these years, let's just try again and, and I put my whole heart and soul into it and then mm -hmm. a few weeks later he goes, Hey, you know what? Fuck you. Uh, that, that kind of hurt. Yeah, it must have really hurt. And um, and with Richard, he didn't even get the benefit of that. She just snuck out the night and took a half his house with him. With her. Had, a, had a crew of people just go into his house and just, he, he got home one night and three quarters of his stuff was gone. Mm -hmm. And she said, she, she left a note saying, I'm, I'm not leaving you for another man. I'm just leaving you because I'm not happy which was a total fucking lie. And um, he didn't even know about that she left it for another man until I called him later. 
just to rub it in, huh? Yeah, Why did you call him again? I can't remember how you guys actually ended up meeting. I called him to see how he was doing. Just three months later, everything looked like it was out in the open. Rick was on Facebook with her and her children were his friends. And her oh. friend, her yeah, friend you weren't fishing for cock, so right? Well, everything's out in the open now. Because mm. I, I purposely did that. I waited that amount of time because I did not want to call him and in the event that he was some kind of crazy person. I didn't want him to flip out and go kill her or something. I didn't want to uh, so I, I thought it was all out in the open, so I called him and I just said, you know, I just wondered how you're handling all this. How are you doing? He's like, what? He didn't even know. I said, well, you might not know my name, but maybe you know my... Oh, you name. couldn't wait to tell him. You couldn't like wait to, to tell him. He's like, what? Mm. He had no idea. So from there, I don't know, I really liked him. First night I talked to him, we talked for an hour and a half, and I really don't dislike this man. Mm. He's got a huge heart. He's very, very wise in a real basic and down to earth kind of way. And wow. I found him to be very honest. Wow, the enemy of my enemy is yeah. my friend. Mm. And it kills, and it really kills two birds with one stone because your mother can't be without Dick and can't be without a husband. And what better way than to go after the ex of the one who's with, and then, ugh, oh, what a disgusting woman. What a valueless, empty, vapid woman. For some reason, that just pissed Rick off to no end, you know? Gee, I wonder that why. you liked him or that you reached out to him? And for that we, Rick, when Rick saw that we were friends on Facebook, he started questioning me, why are you friends, well, how did you come to be friends with him? And I told him it was none of his business. And um, and then, see, she had convinced Rick that Richard was a crazy man that was going to kill him. And Rick was literally, literally, and I don't think he was faking it, he was scared to death. Um, he, thought, he thought that I was going to send Richard to kill him. He literally accused me. Oh, my God. I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder why, stalker. Rick, why would you even think that... Oh, I don't know why I would think that, because you're a fucking stalker, because you stalked your own daughter, you stalked your uh, your first husband, you're stalking people, stalking a two-year-old now. I don't know why you, why you would send somebody after me. No no clue. No clue. And you notice, Sierra, this is all trying to bait you into dropping the accusation. Well, because I think you are capable of doing it based on the facts you've done it before. That's what she's trying to get. She's trying to get that fight out of you. And he said, you just called him to hurt and intimidate me and to scare me. And, and now you've done, you, you know, he was like so paranoid. It was not even funny. And he was like saying, did, did you give him my address? Does he know where I live? Or, you know, how could you do this to me? He's going to kill me. Oh, wow. And, and I'm Rick like, scared. and I'm like, Rick, why are you even saying, I said, that's not true. And he's he has a criminal record, and I said, well, what, what's his criminal record for? What did he do? Hmm. And he goes, I don't know. I said, well, why don't you ask her? She was with him for 21 years. If he has a criminal record, I'm sure she knows what it's for. Well, you know what? The guy has a liquor license. People with criminal records don't get liquor licenses because hmm. they do extensive background checks. And plus, and then, he, and then Rick said, well, he owns guns. And I, I asked Richard. I called him. Yeah, I said, do you own guns? And he goes, yeah, I got a whole collection of guns my father left me. Mm -hmm. He said, they're locked up in a gun safe. Mm -hmm. And he said, I also have a collection of knives on the shelf. You know, it's like every, I questioned him extensively, and it was all lies, but she worked Rick up like that. Maybe she didn't realize how he was already paranoid from his addictions. So two borderlines playing, playing these guys off each other. This is like a match of wits between two two borderline women playing some kind of mental chess with cock, using cock pawns, pawns, cock pawns, okay, in their borderline game of fucking cock chess. That's what's going on here. And in the meantime, your mother's trying 
trying to wipe out you, which could be a fucking knight that would slay all this shit by altering your reality and trying to draw you into a fight you don't need to fucking be in. But, um, man, he just, he was practically, uh, you know, he's like, does he know my address? Is he? I said, Rick, do you really think I would try to have my... This is the borderline to a T. Every word out of her mouth is calculated, is thought out, okay, is planting little seeds of her, their narcissism that can be used and then pulled out at any given time, okay? This is the borderline narcissist at work right now. This is how it goes down. This is how they manipulate. Right here, you're hearing it. My kid's stepfather murdered. Really? <laughs> and he said, I said, do you really think I'm sending somebody to kill you? And he said, you don't even have to send somebody to kill me. You can just do it by thinking about it. That's what Rick said? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's in writing. Do you believe that that's true? Of course. <laughs> I said, listen, Rick, if I had that kind of power, your fucking girlfriend would be dead right now. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Whoa. Whoa. And that's writing. Ooh, see, she likes that. That's supply for her. Because it acknowledges she has this power. So that's why she ones up, one ups it. If I had that power, she'd be dead already. Wow. She likes it. She likes it. Because in a way, what she's saying is, I can make it happen. She is kind of keeping him gaslighted to the fact that, to the point where, eh, maybe I am manipulating this guy. And it's all so clouded, but so calculated on her part. It's how you know these borders, why these borderlines are so dangerous. This isn't psychosis. This isn't schizophrenia. And I know I've seen, I saw some comments about that. I'm not talking about schizophrenic personality disorders. Because when I'm talking personality disorder, I'm talking in the narcissistic spectrum. I'm not talking about bipolars. I'm not talking about schizophrenics. I'm talking, this is the woman who would end up on one of those borderline videos on the couches. This is her. purposeful, calculated, all for a desired end that's to her benefit. So it's all in writing, our whole conversation, is all in writing, and I said, I cannot even believe, first of all, I didn't even know what Richard looked like so mm -hmm. far, I didn't, well, and that was his thing, he said, well, you know, he's six foot five and weighs 350 pounds. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I know that now. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know it before I called him, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I didn't have any any idea that he was a dangerous guy. That the, you know, and he's not. He's not. He didn't even after she left him, he hadn't even had any contact with her in, in the three. So let's consider how ridiculous the premise of of what she's saying is. Okay, Richard isn't scared of um, whoever. Rick, Richard, he's not scared of him because he had, because of your mother. If that way, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he's confident enough to go and fucking deep dick this chick, right? That's not what's going to threaten his life. Your mother calling him and putting him up is what's going to threaten his life. Really? 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 Really, this is your mother also laying veiled threats on you of what she's kid. It doesn't even make sense why he would be afraid if he's already there fucking, fucking laying pipe on this bitch. Your mother's, what's the, what is the deal? Why he's terrified? Really? Really? How does that make sense? 
But in her convoluted story, which is all planned and calculated, it does. And that's why she feeds you these, you know, I'm not capable of this. I would, that, that's where it, that's where the altering of reality is coming from. And it's all, it's all being laid out in front of you. Months before I called him. And only after I called him and Rick found out is when she came back and started, you know, coming to the, his house and screaming at him and telling him that I was a crazy bitch with a, with a sexually transmitted disease and I was a whore and I was a swinger and, you know, I was this and I was that. And, and she thought it was really weird. Why are you two talking to each other? You shouldn't be talking to each other. Hmm. Well, and the reason was, I actually was able to tell him things about her that he didn't know because she never told him, but Rick had told me. The like, borderline loves to tell people shit they don't know. They love to, in they're informers. They gather in, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I've been trying to tell you guys for years. The narcissist gathers information. They're information gatherers. Information to be used at any given time and once that opportunity they can't stop blowing up your spot giving it they love it because it gives them power her younger years and all the shit she had told hmm. so anyway that's why rick and she are mad at, are mad at me and, and richard is simply because we're friends hmm. and we're talking to each other but they have the same opportunity to tell each other everything they know about us, so why shouldn't we have that opportunity? Like my mother used to say, what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Yeah. And then... And you know what I say? You're 60-something fucking years old. Grow the... God, are you fucking serious? This is a high school, another high school cheerleader fight. You stole my boyfriend. I'm going to steal your butt's boy. Why are you friends with him on Facebook? Holy God. These are people in their 60s. Yeah, and then it sounds like a really complicated situation with a lot of her feelings all around. Well, I don't think it's that complicated. It happens all the time. People get together on the internet. They think they're all their problems are going to be solved. They run away with the other person. Hmm. And, uh, you know. I thought I thought she was his old client. They didn't meet on the internet. They met in high school. She came after him on the internet. Yeah, oh, I see. He hadn't spoken to her in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Came right after him. And when she first came after him, he told me. Remember Kim Berger? She contacted me on Facebook and blah, blah. And then pretty soon, I, she, he says, oh, she's not happy in her marriage. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, oh, really? Is that something you're supposed to solve? And he goes, oh, no, no, no. We're just friends. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I know, this is the love of his life. And he's, and he's dumping me. Mm -hmm. But I think Rick was also having a manic episode. You think so? Oh, my God. He was. That fucking ambient that he was on for two and a half years. Hmm. Just he's spilling information. Just spilling it. And I think he's manic. Ambient to back it up. This is all information for you. See, she's trying to plant in your head to change the facts, to change the reality. And it was really, really weird to watch. Because it was like watching what happened to your dad in slow motion. Yeah. And uh, he was fucked up on that ambulance. Mm. He's afraid to go to the movies. Mm. He might get shot. He's afraid to teach his classes. He might get shot. He didn't want me to have the lady next door feed my cat when I was out of town because she might steal his musical equipment. It I mean, sounds like he had a lot of anxiety. Why do you think that was? The ambient. Oh, you think the ambient. That's the ambient. Not you, had, bitch. You Not you. The side effects of the ambient. Mm -hmm. He had them all. Mm. And I was sending him, and he was he was waking up in the night with screaming with leg cramps, mm. which was a rare side effect of Ambien. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? So of a side effect of just not having potassium. Mm -hmm. He had uh, 
he was paranoid. He started having extreme panic attacks, mm -hmm. which he blamed me for. Oh, um, he blamed me for everything, everything that was happening to him because of the ambience, he was blaming me for. And I was saying, no, Rick, look at this list of side effects. He became very, he was coming unglued. He was constantly asking me, did I take my asthma medication this morning? Did you notice if I took this? Did you, did you watch me take the asthma? I'm like, Rick, yeah, one of those things that has your medicine in it for seven days. Hmm. And that, then you'll know if you took it or not. No, no, no. He's he confused. He doesn't know. None of it's her you fault. She has a, they have, borderlines have an answer for everything. Two different asthma inhalers, two different allergy medications, two different blood pressure medications. Um, Notice how she could just rattle it off, too. Sure. She could just rattle it off without even, what was that? What was this? No, because this was all ammo. This is the narcissist borderline's ammo being unloaded. This is when they're saving information. They're, they're, they're keeping it and storing it to be used at any time. This is what I've been talking about over and over again, and this is what you're seeing in, the, in, this, in this recording. Uh, the Ambien, and then when he started having panic attacks, she gave him Ativan. Mm -hmm. And then when he started having, still having panic attacks, she gave him Wellbutrin. One and after another. The, See how fast she fires these out. The effect of Wellbutrin is uh, uh, trouble breathing. And here's the guy, she's already got him on two different asthma medications, and she gives him fucking Wellbutrin. How does she know? He has a CPAP. Mm -hmm. He had... Uh, medication special drops for his eyes oh my god this guy is a walking pharmacy mm -hmm. so and then it was my fault that he wasn't losing weight mm -hmm. it was my fault that he wasn't exercising everything was my fault and i kept just showing him that list and saying rick you need to get off the fucking ambient i can't believe she prescribed it to him you're not supposed to take it for more than two weeks he was taking it for two and a half years mm -hmm. and he was drinking mm -hmm. a lot. I would drink too. Yeah. And which this is something I found He's out. Spilling, the spilling, he spilling. All his money that he made in those three years. Mm -hmm. He lost forty or fifty thousand dollars gambling. Mm -hmm. That was why. That was the, you know when all of this was starting to happen. That was one of the reasons I needed to get a divorce from him. I was afraid he's going to take me down with him financially, and I didn't want that. So luckily, our assets. Oh, but you tried to get back once uh, once all other options you know, failed, huh? He was addicted to cigarettes and uh, Vicodin. Mm -hmm. He used to be chewing up 10, 12 Vicodin a day. One after That's, another. Yeah, it just, depending just, on why you're taking it, that's not necessarily a lot. Uh, I'd be more concerned. I hope you realize this whole speech has been planned. She has rehearsed this in her head. One after another, after another, after another. What about the Tylenol? He didn't have any of the <coughs> Oh, I, I have no idea why he was he taking was, it when you met him. He was an addict. He told me. I'm addicted to it. He was working Anybody that takes Spikadin regularly will become addicted. Yeah, but, he, but that was the only reason he was taking it, was because he was addicted to it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So not only does she know all the medications, when they're, she, no, no, he was an addict. So she already has the pushback. Do you understand like how calculating and how dangerous and how sick in the head this woman really is? No, you do. That's why you, you're subscribing to me. <laughs> why did he start taking him? Rick was a druggie. Just a druggie. No legitimate reason. Yeah, just a druggie. Just a Every opportunity they can show, they can give, no legitimate reason whatsoever, even if he did get hooked on Vicodin. Just a druggie, not he had an injury, not in. It's all him. It's all him. And this is the way it is with every borderline. This is how they roll. This is what they do. This is the level of manipulation they all, they all do it. Those women, those borderlines you saw in that first video. This is the effect of what they're talking about. This is the shit they were all fucking 
pulling what ended up ended them up on that couch where they painted themselves into a corner and decided, you know what, now I'll use the fucking disorder to my advantage. This is what they won't talk about. This is what they don't take responsibility for. This. Because right now, if you said borderline personality disorder to this woman, she'd be like, no way, you're crazy, I'm a victim, da 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 da, -da. You know what's going to come. It is until this woman is out of fucking options that she says, oh, I have borderline personality disorder. I'm a victim. It's not my fault. How is this not her fault? This is all planned, thought out, and with a fucking purpose. And the purpose is to confuse, to purposely confuse people, lie to them, alter the facts, to protect her own shitty goddamn behavior. That's why they're monsters. About speed, he was a drug dealer. I mean, no, he's a drug dealer. I'm just saying, and he often said to me, "I'm an addict. I'm an addict." Yet, you tried to get back with him. You talked to him every day for nine months. This horrible, horrible, horrible guy, right? To the point where the chick he's with X, you're going to fucking go and find. Really, you have this laundry list of fuck-ups. And he's just a drug dealer and a drug addict. Yet, we're to believe all this to be true. Yet, you were trying still to get back with him. But you had to divorce him because he was going to take you down. And then what, ha what, 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 what happened? The reality is right in front of everybody. And they'll try to alter it before you eye, And it's all right there. And when you can step back like this and look at it and see it for what it is. And then you see those women in those videos. You do, do understand. These are monsters. These are monsters that society is trying to make the victims. And forget about all of us. Active personality. Huh. And that was what was going on with all the other. You know why he got off the ambient? Why? About two weeks after I left him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's going to be a fucked up reason. I guarantee you he didn't get off ambient for any good reason. It's some other fucking shitty reason. What, what is it? He called me and he said, uh, I'm off ambient now. I kept begging him to get off because I'm off it. So even his reason's not legitimate, and even if it is, it's proving. I, what, what, what's 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 the point here? It's just trying to pile on. I don't know that you know as much about drugs. I don't know how many other people know Well, anyway, based on the research I did, that was a symptom that uh, that's that's why Ambien. Also, I know that's a thing that can happen with Ambien. Did you know that gambling is also a known side effect of Ambien? It's a known side effect of a lot of drugs, yeah. So anyway, I, will, I believe that, I believe that when he was, um, why did you emphasize that it was a known side effect of Ambien? Because he was gambling. I think that's what made him gamble. Uh, that's probably sounds like being a sport. They're inside now. Hmm. She's 
said it was 26 minutes. We're at 1925 now. Let's see. Um, I mean, the thing is the water's covering the end of it, right? Right, but you want it to be filtering through more of the water, so ideally more, like you'd want it to be like, but, but if you put more in it, it would be better. More is, more is better because you want it, you're, it's bubbling through the water, and, and stuff in the smoke is, is touching the water, so you want it to be in the water as long as possible to get the most particulates out. You may also want to run uh, some rubbing alcohol through that because it looks a little bit dirty. And it won't taste good. And rubbing alcohol will clean it. Um, I'm going to step away to chat with my friend Conrad. Some point minutes. Uh, let me check in with him. I'm not sure. It sounds like she's trying to set up a bomb, to be honest with you. Yes, I do. I clean my pipes. I have cleaned my pipes with rubbing alcohol as well. Um, the thing is that okay. the stuff that's deposited, the, th the reason it's black, um, is is oil-based, and water will clean it. Soap will clean it a little bit. Non-polar solvents like rubbing alcohol clean it the best. Uh, the best thing to do, Astrid. Um, Sierra, heat the alcohol in the microwave for 30 seconds. Just saying. It'll work completely better. You just kind of put rubbing alcohol in it and swish it around. The rubbing alcohol will do the rest. If you have a Q-tip, that would be nice too, or a pipe cleaner. If you have a Q-tip or a pipe cleaner, that would also help. But if it cleaner, that's why they call them pipe cleaners. They just... Yes. Wow. That's, um, they also have... I never realized that. Holy shit. Are you kidding me? I'm surprised that that's never... I never put it together. Do you have any salt? Um, if you don't have any pipe cleaners, then salt also works here. Salt is abrasive um, and doesn't affect the polarity. My brother's house, isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't he sweet to say I have a place to stay if I need it? Yeah, on his couch? No, I have one of the upstairs bedrooms. Oh. Yeah, that's very sweet. You think you'll stay with him? How about that? No. It needs to be ideally flexible. So. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I need to go back to my park in South If you don't have anything, it's, it's not a big deal. But at some point in the future, you may want to just soak it in rubbing alcohol for like a while. Uh -huh. Like like put it in overnight, and then in the morning it'll all come out. Oh, there we go. All the way out. No, I, uh... I don't know what I want to do. Everybody keeps asking me, but you know what? That's what's happening in California, too. And then I made a decision. I came out here. I'm so happy that I did because this is where I should be. Okay, so you're going to stay out here. Well, I want to be, I want to have a headquarters out here. I want to own a house. Cool. That sounds like a plan. And maybe some rental properties. Mm -hmm. The one rental property I looked at has uh, like an area in the back that's a whole big other yard, and I was. I told the real estate agent to see if I could build a tiny house out there. Mm -hmm. um, or I could just buy some acreage from somebody. And, or I could just buy a little house and remodel it the way I wanted. Yeah, you got lots of options. I mean, when you can get a house for $30,000, you can have a lot of money left to play with, right? Okay. Now All about her. Um, 
your phone in. Over here, you can use mine. Here. Because I, I want to have my phone charged for when I'm going to talk to my therapist, and my phone's not charged right now. You know what? You can use some of these phones. Um, I want to go outside for it, though. No, look. Look at that. All right, and that's 26. It sounds like it's just basic talk right now. Okay. Your mother is unbelievable. I mean, she is a piece of work. And the calmness of her is is what gets is is really amazing. It's it's a performance what you saw here. It's a performance of the borderline. Nothing's her fault. Everything's calculated. Everything's planned out. And she was trying to draw you into the fight, which you wouldn't give her. She wanted you to make the accusation so she could deny it and she could make herself out to be the victim. This is the narcissistic borderline recorded. This is their tactics, and this is what they won't talk about in those videos. So. Thank you so much, Sierra, again, for your contribution. Thank you for the recording. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up PayPal, uh, I'm sorry, you'd like to set up Skype, a private message, a private video, or a private phone call, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. And if you're still unsure, wait for the final video link to pop up on the video. That is the instructional video that explains my channel and how to do all that. Also remember to like this video, share it where you can, and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.